Hello, everyone. As usual, we will touch upon the events of the war in Ukraine, but there's also another issue I would like to bring up later in this report. So, let's start with the war. Ukrainian East and Southeast continue to get pounded by Russians. Um, they're still stuck at Bakhmut with no end in sight. They just clearly don't get the message. Um, there's additional evacuation effort uh, in the Kharkiv area. Uh, since Russians decided to try and retake Kharkiv again. So there's still civilians left there. There's still children left there. It is, it is a scary situation for them. And incidentally, remember the conversation about crimes against humanity, war crimes, a violation of international law uh, mentioned, you know, as part of what Russians did in Ukraine. Uh, Russia had just stated that they do not recognize International Criminal Court. So considering that, uh, my question to the international community, what do you plan to do about this? Because you know they're not just going to show up in court willingly. Somebody is going to go and get the culprits if you want to bring them to justice. Meanwhile, uh, Ukraine... Uh, with the aid of the international training that they've received from, from other countries, continues to take out um, Russia's subdivisions, military objects, and um, soldiers. And again, I realize that that is a very flippant way to talk about the loss of life, and I don't feel bad about it. Sorry, not so. And here's another reason to hate Putin and people who support him. Uh, which is uh, over 80 or 85 percent of Russians at this point. So he is now recruiting soldiers from women's prisons because they ran out of soldiers to recruit in men's prisons. So again, there's two things going on there. One is uh, there are probably people there uh, imprisoned for some really petty crimes, including bogus crimes like uh, being anti-Putin or spreading Russophobia and so on and so forth. And they get basically shipped off to Ukraine as cannon fodder. Another problem is that among those prisoners being unleashed into Ukraine are genuinely dangerous individuals, including serial killers, rapists, thieves, all kinds of thugs. Some of them will get eliminated as part of the war. But some will come home, and they have been issued a blank check, basically. They have been issued a full pardon for the service to their country. So these people, these criminals, are going to come back into Russian civilian communities. What do you think is going to happen, Russian people, when these thugs come back after spending months and months and months you know, indiscriminately slaughtering civilians, and they get bored? Whom do you think that's going to harm? And now to the other matter that I wanted to bring to your attention. To, so we had the Oscars, right? And um, lots of very worthy people, artists, actors, directors, you know, movie industry contributors received their awards. There is one that I have genuinely a big problem with. And that is the uh, full feature-length documentary Navalny winning the Best Feature Documentary Oscar. There is a fantastic uh, webcast on the subject uh, by Ukrainian Toronto Television. You know, they ca cover a lot of the details. But let me tell you sort of the short version of what they will be talking about. And I will include the link in the comments. First of all, this documentary includes no original material. Everything in that documentary, as good as the investigation was, everything in that documentary has, has been posted over months and months and months on YouTube by Navalny's uh, PR team. Okay. So, like, it, how does that work? I take a YouTube video, I combine it with a bunch of other YouTube videos, and I call it a movie and I win an Oscar for it. No, that's cheating. Another problem is that 
Navalny is really portrayed as a martyr, a man who stands up to the autocratic government and stands up to Putin. That is not true. If the Academy was trying to stick it to Putin by awarding the Oscar to this documentary, um, they have miscalculated severely. Navalny is inconsequential, and this is not going to send any serious messages to Putin. In fact, this is going to be very bad for Russia's image, and it's also a slap in the face of basically all of the countries harassed and invaded by Russia. And here is why. While he's technically kind of in opposition to Putin, you have to look closer and see what he is for, what he does not oppose. He is a nationalist. His slogans are Moscow for Moscovites, Russia for Russians. In his earlier videos, going as far back as 10 years ago, and this position has not changed and he never apologized for it, he compared migrant workers in Russia to cockroaches who should be exterminated. He advocated the shelling of Georgia. Remember I told you Georgia was a dress rehearsal for Ukraine? That was true. He advocated the shelling of innocent civilians in Georgia. This is all on record. You don't have to take my word for it. Go look it up. He did this. Or, you know, go, go watch the um, Ukrainian Toronto Television's podcast, and they include the sources there. This man participated in a nationalist rally where... Um, People were giving the Nazi salute, and he almost saluted them back, although he held himself back a little bit in just the last second. But when he was asked, why are you associating with Nazis? He said, well, that is part of my political charisma. I can talk to anyone. Besides, you know, we have to form coalitions against a bigger enemy. No! No, ask Germany, how that worked out for them, forming a coalition with Nazis against something. How that worked out for them and how that ended. No, there are certain boundaries you do not cross and that there are certain coalitions you do not make. And this is one of them. Um, also, He's been really wishy-washy about giving Crimea back to Ukraine. In the last few days, actually, going up to the Oscars, he finally said, yeah, maybe Ukraine should get Crimea back. But in the past, he did not. This is recent. He just flip-flopped. And as they said, you know, in the podcast, he is a politician. All he cares about is his ratings and the votes and so he says what people basically want to hear. When talking about Russia's biggest problems, like the kind that can really destroy the country, Navalny maintains that it's corruption. Not the crazy megalomaniac leader, not the completely brainwashed people who um, support him. No, 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 no. Not Russia starting wars and threatening the use of nuclear weapons. No, it's corruption. And here's why it's important. He basically said that the reason Russia is failing in Ukraine is because of corruption, because the money has been stolen, the equipment has been compromised. And that might be true. But notice... He didn't say that he had a problem with the war itself. He never did. Not once. For all his opposition to Putin, never once did he oppose this war and the slaughter of civilians. No, no, no. He basically just said, you know, had Russia not been so corrupt, we would have done better in Ukraine. So he's basically telling Russian government, you all stop stealing if you want to invade Ukraine. And this is the man who just got celebrated in front of humongous television audiences. Shame on you, Academy. That is truly disgusting. One of the other documentaries nominated for Oscar was Ukrainian, A House Made of Splinters, about the fate of Ukrainian orphans. Thank you for watching.